Good morning everyone, as I promised in yesterday's video, today's video is going to be the Dark Balls Aegis Guide. But before we jump into the video, if you're new to the channel, I upload NGS content daily, so if you do play this game, I would really appreciate a subscribe as it really helps out the channel. Anyway, without further ado, let's begin the video. So as I said in yesterday's video, I'm going to be using the exact same footage and I'm going to be breaking it down on what exactly I'm doing and why I'm doing it in order to skip the DPS check at the very last phase, as well as get a faster clear time on Dark Falls Aegis. However, before I start talking about strategies, I just want to let everyone know that your time does not affect your loot. So just because you can clear Dark Falls Aegis faster does not mean that you will get better loot. There is no benefit in clearing this faster other than for flexing purposes. Alright, with all the disclaimers out of the way, let's roll the clip. So at the very beginning, it's very straightforward. You're literally just going to kill all the little minions so that the force field goes down so that you can continuously move closer towards Dark Falls. Now once you've cleared all the minions, you're going to notice that he has four legs over here or four things that are shooting missiles. He's going to slam all four of them into the ground. So what you want to do beforehand while you're still in that one minute waiting room before the urgent quest actually begins is just to let everyone know whether you're all starting on the left side or if you're all starting on the right side and you're just going to work your way clockwise or counterclockwise depending on what leg you choose so in the footage you're going to see that we're all going to focus on the most left leg first and work our way towards the right leg so as you can see over here he's raising his legs and he's about to slam these down and you can see that we're all located right at the left leg this is because we coordinated this beforehand when we were waiting in that one minute waiting room we're like okay everyone we're going to be focusing the left leg and work our ways towards the right leg slowly and you can see over here that the blight round is going to help you a ton so i highly recommend to have a ranger at least one because the blight round will allow you to break these legs extremely extremely quickly now once this phase is over he's going to shoot down at the ground and basically do this pulse bomb thing you can literally just run away from it or you can counter it just don't get hit like swagala over there then we're immediately going to summon our cannons so something that you can do with these cannons is you can actually counter or sidestep those projectiles and you will automatically shoot out extra missiles. So what you want to do is you want to get very comfortable with sidestepping over here so that you can unleash extra missiles in order to uh, deal damage to Dark Falls much faster. Now other than sidestepping, I do recommend splitting up the group a little bit, at least having one or two people stay in the back killing just the mobs so that you get enough score so that you can summon multiple cannons. However, now you can see that he stabbed his legs back into to the ground. So this is the part where you want to use your laser beam. Something that you need to pay attention to is the duration of your cannon. If you summon your cannon too early and if you don't have enough DPS, sometimes by the time you get to this phase, your cannon just runs out. Then you would have wasted a laser beam. So you need to be very careful and you kind of need to gauge your team's DPS. However, if you're running in a pre-made and you're doing this multi-runs, then you probably have a good feel of how much damage you have. However, if you're playing with random players, it's going to be a lot more difficult to gauge how much damage the team is doing. But nevertheless, the moment that he slams his legs down, you want to use your laser beams in order to deal additional damage over here and uh, just break the legs super duper fast. As you can see that we broke that leg extremely fast and we just move on to the next leg. So under normal circumstances, most people should be able to destroy two of the legs by the time this phase ends. You can see over here, since we are relatively strong, we are managing to DPS the third leg before this phase actually ends. But you're going to see that we don't actually destroy the third leg when this phase ends. You're going to see that his leg's actually going to go straight up pretty soon. You see that little red glow and poof, it goes back up. But we were not able to destroy that third leg. Once that phase is over, he's going to do the exact same thing as before. You know, he's going to do this pulse blast. Again, you can immediately summon your gun because what's going to happen is we will be able to stun Dark Falls relatively soon because we will be shooting central cannon. The key factor that determines when the central cannon is going to launch is based off his HP. Once you get Dark Falls HP below a certain threshold, Crawford will automatically shoot Central Cannon. So that's the only thing you should be focusing on in order to get to this phase over here. So you can see, you know, we got to the phase, but since we did so much damage already, it just instantly goes straight into Central Cannon again. And once here, again, you want to use your big laser beam in order to deal tons of damage, because as you can see here, especially with the Blight Round, you can see that I hit for 9,000 damage at the very end, which is very, very nice. Now, depending on your gear, you might want to throw away your gun over here and just go straight and DPS with your weapon. However, in my case, since I do have a lot of floor potency, I can just 
just use the gun. Remember, the gun's DPS does take into account your floor potency. So if you have a lot of floor potency, your gun is going to deal more damage than other players. Now, once this phase is over, you're going to see a bunch of shields over here. So the thing that determines whether the shield will float away after Dark Falls first blast is dependent if there is an Arx Defender hiding behind the shield or not. So you can see Swagala and Crimson are hiding behind this shield over here, while the rest of the team is hiding behind this shield. So both of these shields are going to float up simply because there are Arx Defenders hiding behind them. So with that newfound knowledge, you can see that I immediately start moving towards the right side because I know that these two shields are going to be floating away. So the right shield is going to be the closest one that I can go to to take cover. As you can see over here, these shields are floating away because people hid behind them. So now we move over here to the right shield, and again, we're just waiting for the second blast to end, and boom, we're done, we're free to DPS again. So during this phase, you're going to see Crawford say, all rear guard units, we need your support as soon as possible. There are four possible NPCs to help you, each representing their own region. So you have Aina Manon from Alio, you have Nadara from Ratem, you have Ilma from Kavars, and you have Glenn from Stia. Now it does not really matter on who you get over here, unless you are speedrunning. But as you can see here, we did get Aina and Manon, which is considered, in my personal opinion, one of the best, because it gives you extra movement speed and it gives you 200% more damage against these doll units as well as Dark Falls, which is very, very beneficial if you are planning to speedrun. However, if you get Glenn, for example, that will give you 2000% more PP regeneration, which doesn't actually affect anything in speedrun wise. However, to be honest, it doesn't matter. I know some people abandon the quest because they get Glenn, but honestly, you're only saving yourself at most one minute, which doesn't really matter. Because as I said in the beginning of the video, your time does not affect your loot, it's really just for flexing purposes. So once you finish that, he's gonna slam his legs down again. So you can see that we've only got the two legs on the right remaining. As you can see over here, I went into Z view, which is the over the shoulder view, and I will be shooting my laser. The reason I did this is because at the time of this recording, I believe that the laser would pierce through this yellow barrier and hit the second leg that is right behind it. Unfortunately, after much testing, it does not actually shoot through and hit the leg behind it. So just to clarify, the laser beam with the cannon does not pierce through these legs, even though it looks like it does, but unfortunately it does not. I tested this multiple times solo, and unfortunately the damage does not go through. But what you're going to notice over here is that we're actually going to destroy the fourth leg. The moment we destroy the fourth leg, you're going to notice that we get a surplus of points, which means we can instantly summon multiple cannons. So what you want to do is you want to quickly run towards one of these spawn points so that you can laser beam, give up the weapon, pick up another cannon and laser beam again. So as you can see over here, I have five uses of the mobile cannon M2 simply because we destroyed all four legs and were able to summon another cannon and very very easily and I can immediately laser beam again. Once I'm done with this laser beam, I can press zero to give up and immediately summon another one. And you can see over here, boom. And this part is where you can take advantage of these laser beams. These laser beams, when they're fully charged, are actually gonna shoot like this constant beam and you can constantly sidestep in order to get a ton of damage because remember, whenever you sidestep with the cannon, you automatically shoot out rockets. So you're gonna see me do that relatively soon over here. And you see, you can just sidestep constantly and you keep shooting out those missiles and you'll deal a ton of damage as you can see dark Aegis literally just went into his next phase immediately because he lost a ton of hp because we constantly spam sidesteps and it wasn't just me there was like three or four other people there as well and it does a lot of damage immediately pushes him down and we can use our cannons once more and power through. Now, something else to keep in mind is when his HP is zero over here and you're dealing damage, this damage carries over onto his second phase. So you wanna take advantage of these precious seconds over here to deal as much damage as possible since it does carry over to the second phase. And now you can see we're heading into the second phase and Crimson Sins over here says right side. This is very important to communicate with the team so that people know where to focus. And this is to make sure that every Everyone is focusing the same spot so that you can take full advantage of the blight round. So what you're going to notice over here is he's not actually going to be full HP. You can see that he actually lost like maybe 3% or 4% of his HP bar over here the moment the fight started. And this is because we dealt extra damage during the first phase while he was down. Now you can actually deal a lot more damage than this. I've seen Darkfall Aegis lose 10% of his HP the moment the phase even starts. So there is a lot of room for improvement over here in order to deal 
even more damage. You just need everyone to time their lasers perfectly and you're going to be able to deal additional damage and make the second phase even easier. And you can see over here that Darkfall Aegis has a bunch of different attacks. However, honestly, none of them really matter. All you need to do is just focus the same spot together and just DPS and you're going to be perfectly fine. Now, while you're fighting Dark Falls Aegis, you're going to notice that Dark Falls will sometimes try to run away from the middle of the arena. As you can see, he twisted his body towards the left side and the arena will actually spin. The moment this happens, you want to immediately run towards the right side because he's going to teleport there and summon an energy ball, which you need to destroy in order to move on to the next phase. So you can see over here, the arena is spinning. We immediately run towards the right side. He's going to summon these walls, which you can counter and you can just continue running over in order to attack the energy ball that he spawned right here. Once you destroy the energy ball, Dark Falls will drop a bunch of goodies that you can pick up in order to heal yourself or revive or whatever, and he's gonna move on to the next phase. And after you get Dark Falls Aegis to 60% HP, he's gonna start glowing red, and he's gonna summon all of these platforms. You're gonna see these platforms explosions coming up, so you're just gonna wait until they explode and the platform's gonna rise, and you're gonna see a bunch of these dark crystal looking things. So what you want to do is you want to break them. However, you do not want to break all of them. You want to leave one of them untouched. The reason being is if you destroy all of them, it will automatically end the phase and he will do an HP check in order to determine what his next move is going to be. So what you want to do is you want to break a bunch of these and everyone's picking these up and throwing it at the boss because it deals significant amount of damage until all of the fragments are thrown. Then you break the very last one that is standing. So it's very important that you guys have a little bit of communication on this so that everyone's on the same page because it's very easy to mess this up especially if everyone's just kind of rushing around and just destroying it and throwing these things instantly you just want to be calm and calculated because remember all of these little fragments do deal quite a bit of damage so you can see over here that there are two pillars over here that we have not destroyed yet and we're going to break this one i believe and leave this one up until we've thrown all three of those fragments and you can see that there's another fragment over here for darkness to pick up so you just want to make sure that you throw all of these fragments at the boss before you break the very last one and you can see over here that everyone's standing here we're all throwing the fragments before we break the very last one because we know that if we break this one or it's going to end this phase automatically so we threw everything all right we're all done now we break it we pick up these we get to throw these down before he moves on to his next phase and bam the phase has ended and he's back to his regular mode again so after this phase, he's always going to do this move. The reason he's doing this move is because there are people all over the arena. Since our group is organized, we're all standing over here. However, if you're playing with random players, there's going to be people standing over here. There's going to be people standing all over the arena. And this move kind of shoves everyone together. So this is why Dark Falls always does this attack right after that phase. And right after that phase ends, again, he just has a bunch of normal rotations, which you're just going to DPS and you're just going to try to deal as much damage as you can to him. So now you can see Dark Falls is running away from the center of the arena again, which means we run right. So again, he's summoning these walls, we just counter them, or you can dodge them, or whatever. And we get over here to his energy ball again. We're going to break the energy ball, and then uh, he's going to drop all those goodies again, and he's going to go back into his normal rotation. So there we go, we destroyed the energy ball, we're waiting for his next attack over here. And luckily, he does this attack over here, which is very, very easy because you can see that his break gauge is about to be broken. So in order to skip the DPS phase at the very last phase, so when he's about 25% HP, you want to make sure that you either get an elemental down, a physical down, or a break. And that is the window of opportunity where you burst him down from 25% HP to 0% HP so that you can skip the DPS check phase. So you're going to see over here, he's going to be broken relatively soon. And what I want to point out over here is I have my photon blast ready, I have my katana combat ready, I have all of my big burst abilities. As long as everyone is saving your big burst abilities for the moment he breaks or at the very last phase from pushing 25% to 0%, this is where you use all of your burst abilities in order to burst the boss down. So as you can see over here, I'm waiting to get the blight round to purple so that we get the 25% more DPS and now I use all of my big hitting skills. You can see over here that I hit for 35,000. This was not not a crit so uh, unfortunately I was holding the team back a little bit but you can see everyone else is hitting a ton of damage as well and just pay attention to his HP I'm not gonna pause it I'm just gonna play it through and you can just see his HP totally melt and here I do another katana combat end 25,000 damage and he just gets destroyed 
However, if you are unable to burst Dark Falls down from 25% to 0%, he will go into the DPS check phase, where you can see the entire arena turns purple. He's going to summon meteorites from the left side and the right side. It's very important that if you do get to this phase, that you split the team up four to the left and four to the right. Now, what I like to do is I just stand in the middle and I wait until everyone picks a side, and then I go to the side with the least amount of players. So you're going to see that there are a bunch of these little orbs as well as a medium orb. If you are a ranged player, you want to focus on the little orbs because these little orbs, if they get absorbed by Dark Falls Aegis, it increases the HP of the giant orb that comes at the very end. So you want to make sure that you destroy as many little orbs as possible. Now, if you're melee, you want to mainly focus on the medium orb so that the ranged players can focus on the little ones. However, if everyone on your team is melee, well, then it's a free for all and uh, you just got to do the best that you can. As a braver, it's not too bad because uh, with your empowered auto attack after three PAs, that ranged attack can actually destroy these orbs in one hit, so that is pretty useful. So as you can see over here that I'm just mainly focusing on this medium orb over here and it's just going to explode relatively soon so that we can move into the middle. So once we destroy the medium orb, we're going to run into the middle. So as you can see, the other side did the same already. They destroyed their medium orb. We all move into the middle. Again, there's going to be all these little orbs, which you also want to destroy because again, if they gets absorbed by Dark Falls Aegis, this big orb is going to gain additional HP. So you want to break all these little orbs. As for the melee people, again, you want to focus on the big orb over there because uh, uh, yeah, you just you, you want to destroy it because if you don't, it's going to do a really big arena wide attack, which is going to hurt a lot of people and most likely kill most players. So as you can see over here, we were able to destroy the big orb before it got absorbed. So you can see that the explosion range is only going to be half of the arena. If you fail to destroy the big orb, this red line is actually going to be where I am standing right now. You can still avoid it by standing at the very edge of the arena and you won't take damage and you won't die. However, it does mean that you did fail the DPS check, but to be perfectly honest, failing the DPS check and clearing it doesn't really make a difference. So you can see over here that we completed it. He's going to do this explosion. There's going to be these orbs. You want to counter those orbs or sidestep it. And then this is the last phase over here. You just want to run over to Dark Falls. He never gets up, I believe, and you can just kill him over here. He just doesn't do anything. He's just tired. And uh, yeah, super easy clear. Special thanks to all the members for supporting the channel. It really means a lot to me. Thank you again. But yeah, that's all I wanted to cover in today's video. Hopefully you guys found it helpful. If you did, I would appreciate a like and a subscribe. And I'll see you guys in tomorrow's video. Bye.